Hey, what's going on, everybody? If you're just getting started in DaVinci Resolve, the first thing you might be wondering is what the heck is going on with all these different tabs at the bottom? Well, each tab represents a different page serving a distinct purpose. So together, they form a simple unified environment where you can perform end-to-end -end editing process in DaVinci Resolve. Now, before we dive into what each page does, one thing I want to quickly call out is that you can right-click each icon and then in the menu, select to show either just the icon or both the icon as well as the labels. So for the sake of this demonstration, I'm going to leave it at icon and label setting. So the media page here is primarily used for importing footage into the project. So for the sake of this example, I'm going to bring in these five clips into the master bin. You're going to be prompted with a message asking if you want to change the project frame rate. So usually we say change. So what this does is to essentially align the project timeline frame rate with the clips frame rate. So which is going to be 30 frames per second in this case. Now, once that is done, we can take it to the cut page or the edit page. This is where you are going to bring these clips into a timeline and then start to cut it and edit it like a pro. Now, if you're wondering what the difference is between cut and edit page, well, no worries, we're going to get into that a little bit later. Now, moving on to the Fusion page. So this is where you can create all kinds of special effects. Uh, you can do compositing, you can create motion graphics, you can create text animation, anything you can think of. And underneath the tools here, you have all kinds of different nodes that will help you achieve that. Now, the next page is color page. This is where you can do color grading and color correction. This is one of the more prominent features that really puts the Vinci Resolve on the map. Now, moving on to a Fairlight page. This is a page dedicated to audio editing and audio engineering. So much so that you only see the audio part of the two clips that we just imported. Now, last but not the least, we have the deliver page. This is where you're going to render out everything you've done so far. Up top here, you have a lot of presets, but you can also customize all the export settings based on your preference. And one last thing I want to call out here is that these tabs are highly interconnected. So on the edit page, for example, if I click on this clip, go to the inspector panel and then go to the audio tab here, we can make changes to the audio without necessarily having to go to the Fairlight page. Another example is that if we were to go to the Fusion page, we can bring a color corrector node and then make a color correction here on the Fusion page without going into the color page. And lastly, whether that is the color page, edit page, cut page, fusion page, you can directly import a clip into the media pool by simply dragging and dropping it without necessarily having to go to the media tab here first. So the key takeaway is that because these tabs are highly interconnected with one another, there are some overlaps in terms of features amongst all these different pages. Another common question people often have when they're just getting started is what the difference is between cut and edit page. Well, in short, cut page is a simplified version of edit page meant for quick, easy edits, while the edit page is meant for complex, precise, and detailed editing. Now, they do share some similarities. So for example, on the cut page, you will see that fixed playhead is turned on by default. But if you come to the timeline option here, you can turn it off should you choose to do so. Now, if you come to the edit page, you're gonna notice that fixed playhead is not turned on by default. However, if you come to the timeline option here, you can choose to turn it on if you like. Now, another similarity between the two is that on the cut page, you can come to the space in between two clips here and then drag it left and right to review the trim editor in the preview window. Now, if you come to the edit page, what you need to do is to double click on the space that's in between two clips to review the trim editor that's going to show you how many frames are trimmed to the left and then to the right side of the clip. So these two pages do share some similarities, but the execution can be a little bit different. The differences between the two, however, are what make them interesting. So for example, on the cut page, you actually have two timelines, 
one on the top that shows you the entire length of the timeline, and then one underneath it that shows you a zoomed in version of that. However, the zoomability, if that's a word, is not adjustable at all. So this is a big difference compared to the edit page where you can see that you have absolute full control over how zoomed in or zoomed out you want the timeline to be. So much so that you actually have presets here that will take you directly to a desired zoom level. Another difference here is that on the cut page, you can add speed points to create a speed ramp. Uh, however, the challenge is when you start to change the speed. So if I were to, let's say, click on these handles, drag them left and right, it's not going to change the speed at all. So what you need to do that is to either right click this part of the clip and then select change speed or go to the speed change section here in the inspector panel or click on these percentages to uh, select the desired uh, speed percentage. Now, again, this is a big difference compared to the edit page where you can just right click a clip and in the menu select read time controls. And then you can simply just click on add speed a point. This will allow you to easily add speed points. And once that's done, the best part is that you can very quickly change speed by simply drag on these handles to any percentage that you want. Super convenient, super easy. And the best part is that you can right click again and in the menu, select read time curve. So this will allow you to adjust the transition, the smoothness of the transition between different speed percentages. The next thing I want to talk about here is transitions and effects. So in order to see them, make sure that effects is selected and now go to toolbox and then you can simply click on video transitions. This is going to reveal a huge library of different transitions that you can use. So in order to apply it, make sure that you select the transition that you want and then simply drag and drop it in between two clips. And there you go. Now you might run into a situations where you try to apply it and it just does not work. So a likely cause for that is that there is no overlaps between these two clips. So what you can do in this case is to start to trim a little bit of the clips on the left and also the clips on the right. So now if you were to, let's say, reapply uh, this transition, uh, this should work. All right, and now what we're gonna do is to uh, start to make some changes to these transitions by simply clicking on them. And then in the inspector panel, you will see all these different settings. So you can change the duration here very easily. You can also just simply drag on these transitions to lengthen it or shorten it however you want. You can also change the placement to either the clip that's on the left uh, in between these two clips or just the clip that is on the right. You can also change the easing and ease out. So for example, if you come to the ease setting here and then change it to in, so what's gonna happen is that you're going to have a very smooth transition into the clip, into the transition, and then very quick on the way out. And then if you were to let's say change uh, the ease setting here to out, so what's gonna happen here is that you're going to have a very quick uh, ease into the transition and then very smooth on the uh, way out. And then last but not the least, if you change it to uh, in and out, uh, so this is going to give you a more balanced transition throughout the two clips. And for audio transitions, it works exactly the same. So simply click on audio transitions, select the effect, and then drag and drop it in between two audio clips and voila. Now there's a special type of transition called Stinger and to access them, you wanna click on generators and then scroll to the bottom where it says Stinger transitions. Over here, you're gonna see a big library of all these different transitions. Now the big difference here is that to apply them, you wanna drag and drop these transitions on top of the two clips rather than insert it in between these two clips. So once it's there, you can simply change the timing here uh, if this is too long for you and you're going to see that uh, everything is going to adjust accordingly and these transitions are super fun super cool and to change it you simply just uh, you know click on this uh, transition and then go to the inspector panel uh, here you're gonna see all these settings that you can uh, play with uh, to customize it and then uh, once again it's very dynamic so if you change the timing of this clip everything is going to change accordingly so it's a very cool type of transition that I highly recommend you to explore.
Now, what about effects? Well, you can click on either effects or open effects to access all these different types of effects. So under effects, you have a lot of these different fusion effects that you can apply to a clip. So in order to apply it, what you want to do is just select the effect that you want to use and then insert it into this clip. So now you're going to see that this effect is being applied and you can come to the uh, in inspector panel here and underneath it, you're going to see all these different settings that uh, that you can play with uh, to change how it's going to look. So it's quite customizable uh, in that sense. And if you are someone who's technical and want to know how it's made, you can actually click on the fusion button here. And this is going to take you to the fusion page. And then you can right click this group of nodes and then in the menu select ungroup. This is going to expand all these different nodes that are being used to create this effect. And lastly, if you click on open FX, this is going to review a big selection of different special effects that you can apply on a clip. So once you've selected or decided the effect that you want to apply, simply drag and then insert it into the clip. And here we go. So in the inspector panel here, you have a lot of different settings. So I've used the vignette here so I can change the size and also the softness of it to make it look really good. And now if you're like me and you don't have studio, so you will see that some features are not going to be available, uh, but that's OK. A lot of them are. And also the best part is that you can apply multiple effects to one clip. So here I've decided to use stop motion as well. So now you can see that uh, not only do we have vignette, but also stop motion effects, uh, both apply to the same clip. So uh, this is just a very easy way to take an ordinary clip uh, to the next level by simply applying uh, different special effects to the clip. And again, it's very easy to do. While there is a reason that a media cut and edit pages are at the front of the chain and then the other tabs are at the end of it, there are some nuances that I want to point out. So if let's say on the edit page here, you were to make some changes to the clips. And now if you take it to the fusion page, you are actually not going to see these changes at all. Same thing with if you were, let's say, take it to the color page and make some color corrections here very quickly. And now if you take this clip back to the fusion page, you just don't see this change. And if you take it back to the edit page, however, you now see the color correction changes that you just made. So this can be a little bit frustrating for a lot of users. Now, the good news is that there is a workaround. So what we're going to do right now is to just make some changes here in the inspector panel to this clip. And now let's take it to the color page and then make some color correction changes here as well very quickly. And now let's go back to the edit page. We are going to right click it and then in the menu select new compound clip. So we are going to create a compound clip here. And now if we were to take this compound clip to the fusion page, Voila, there you go. You see all these changes being transferred. No problem. Now, if you change your mind and want to make some further changes to uh, these clips, you can just simply go back to the edit page, right click this clip. And then in the menu, what we're going to do is to select open in timeline. So this is going to open up a temporary timeline where you can make changes to this clip and this clip only. So Let's just do that. Let's just make some changes here in the inspector panel. Uh, let's also take it to uh, the uh, color page uh, here and make some just quick uh, color correction uh, changes there too. And now let's just take it back to the edit page and then we're going to click on timeline here. So then this will take you back to the actual timeline. And then if you go back to the fusion page, now you see all these new changes applied here too. So as you start editing more and more uh, in DaVinci Resolve, you may notice this problem. And then here's a good workaround for you to ensure that all these changes are smoothly transferred amongst uh, these different pages. Lastly, I want to talk about three common edit modes on the edit page. And you have the selection, a trim edit, as well as the blade edit mode. And each one has a keyboard shortcut assigned to it. And it's extremely important for you to remember uh, these keyboard shortcuts because as I will demonstrate later on, it's going to help you edit much better and faster in DaVinci Resolve. All right, so in the selection edit mode, 
What it allows you to do is to move clips around freely. Either that is moving a clip to a different track or wasting that same track just to a different place. Uh, you can easily uh, do that. And uh, it can also allow you to trim clips. But uh, here, one thing to note is that it's not a rippled. So you're going to leave a gap there in between clips. Uh, and all the other clips are not going to move accordingly. Now you can also click on the uh, part in between two clips uh, to allow you to do row edit. Now, if you switch to the trim edit mode, uh, the first thing you can do here is to slip the content of the clip without actually moving the clip. And now another thing you can do here is to do ripple trimming. So as you can see that this is a big difference compared to the selection mode where you're going to leave a gap, but here it's rippled. So what that means is that every other clip is going to move as you start to trim. So this will ensure that you leave no um, space at all. Uh, now, if we switch to the blade edit mode this well essentially allows you to make a cut anywhere on any clip uh, at any time so as you can see that now we've made all these cuts and we can do anything we want with them and this is where remembering those shortcuts is going to be super handy. So there is a good chance we're going to switch to a different mode right now, do a ripple delete, and then we're going to do a little bit of ripple trimming by switching to another mode uh, here. And you see that being able to switch amongst these modes is going to really uh, help you achieve a fast edits in the Vint Resolve. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and learned a lot. And as always, I will see you next time. Thank you.